we're back on the air, and we have a box that came all the way from Asia. This is from PlayAsia.com. This was shipped from Singapore, it looks like. And we're going to see what's inside. It's time. Bum, 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 bum. I have no idea what's in this box because I have so many different things coming. I like how they, I like how they set it face Whoa, down. It is Ooh. nice and bubble wrapped, and this is going to just make a Ooh, mess everywhere. Might as well. This is good audio for everyone listening. I'm sorry, but we're opening a box that was stuffed full of bubbles. Okay. It's two. We got some amiibo. We got. Ooh, Play Asia sent me a coupon for my next order. Okay, I got Charizard finally arrived. Welcome, Charizard. Charizard's gonna join the Bazard, the battle. Or, as it is in ja Japanese, Lizardon. Lizardon! Because I bought the Japanese Charizard. And I also got, wow. oh look, Meta Knight came. Meta Knight came. Meta Knight, the Best Buy exclusive here in North America. I ordered from Japan, and it's Meta Knight in Japanese also. So that's cool. And Play Asia so kindly sent me this $5 off coupon. Minimum product value, $60. This expires in August. And that's cool. So uh, I have more stuff to order from Play Asia. Cool. So I don't know if I have $60 worth of stuff, but now apparently I do. So that's cool. So the Amoeba come, came. Uh, Shulk is on the way. Okay. Um, who else am I missing? Wario. Wario's on the way. And I think those are the last ones I have coming that will finish. And then all I need to find is Robin and Lucina. And then I'll have all the Smash Bros. Amiibo that are out right now. And I still have to find my Splatoon Amiibo now that since my 3-pack got canceled. Mm. You gotta put some shelving in here. Well, yeah, move this stuff down. we gotta work on the shelving issue here because it's getting rough. Yeah. Chris, you know what else is rough? What's up? Plugging your cell phone into charge. Oh man. I mean, you know, we're talking. We're talking. I don't know. Look at that thing. Like, it's, that's just asking to be a problem. I'm not. I'm, I don't know. I'm not worried as much as the charger breaking, but internal components. Breaking. Yeah. The the way phone chargers are set up right now, you're just asking to break something. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like you put the charger in there, and you set it on the desk with cables like laying all over. It. It's like. If you're in the airport even, you know, you sit in the airport, people like stank their backpack on your charger, mm -hmm. you're holding your phone, and something's gonna break eventually. I also think one of the issues with it being plugged in like this is there's a lot of play here. Yeah. Which causes this mm -hmm. the cord the to cord actually start to fray. Start to fray and things start to break and it's not good. Well, Chris, there's a Kickstarter project called like Snap. Snaps. Snaps, Snaps. Snaps with a Z. It's like Snap with a Z at the beginning, basically. And uh, it's a Kickstarter that's nine dollars, and basically it's an adapter for your, either your Lightning cable or your USB micro that Android uses to charge. And it basically turns your charger into a magnetic charger that is similar to the way the MacBook uh, charges. So it's, it's so sweet. You're gonna plug a small magnetic piece in the bottom of your phone. Mm -hmm. Then you're gonna slide. You probably guys can't see this; it's too small, far away. And then you're going to put another slide. You're going to put a, basically a plug on the end of your lightning cable and or then a micro USB cable. It connects magnetically, gives it free play of movement if it comes off. James right. If walks it comes off, off, if someone trips on your cable, it's going to come on plug with ease. It won't break your phone, send your phone flying across the room. Exactly. Uh, and it's $9. I think this is Nine. probably the cheapest Kickstarter we have seen. It's definitely the cheapest we've talked about on the podcast. Are you going to back this project? I don't typically back anything on Kickstarter, but for $15, you can get one connector that goes into your phone and then two of the adapters. So you can have two cables set up ready to use this magnetic charger. That's pretty cool. That's good for me. I, I mean, I have two chargers, one for work, one for home, and only one phone. Um, I have like four chargers. I have one at home, one at work, one in my car, one in Rachel's car. So uh, car, yeah, car. I wouldn't be worried about car for me. Yeah, I mean, car is not that big of a deal. No. Other than you have that connector you have to take out and do something. With. Exactly. So. so, but it's really cool. I am probably gonna do the fifteen dollar. Yeah, package. there's a fifteen dollar offer right now. You can do like a custom pledge, basically. By like fifteen dollars, you get a connector and two adapters. Yes. And uh, it looks like they're gonna start shipping in November. 
So I don't know how you guys feel about Kickstarter and may or may not be getting what you're ordering, but I think at this point, if they were having any issues, they probably would have said something since they would be behind the schedule. Yeah. So I think this is a pretty good bet considering they wanted $120,000 and they're over a million right now. Yes. So it's definitely coming, uh, it should be November, but uh, it's definitely the first Kickstarter that really has me going, okay, it's time to back this. Now, I think I've said that before on the show, but I didn't back it though. Uh, it was that water bottle, right? That's right. Yeah. I didn't back it because I wanted like a filter in it to like filter out the chlorine taste in yeah. the water. I know that's real picky of me, but that's just the way it is. I am going to back this project between here and a month, I would say. Yeah, Chris it's, is on board. As soon as I'm I showed it to him, he was like, I want it, send me the link. Uh, I like it. I think it's a really cool idea. Um, we'll see. I have a few months left to decide, so. I think it's big for iPhone users, bigger than, I, I think, uh, Android. Well, the, actually, honestly, it's a better, it's more useful for Android users because a micro USB cable has to be plugged in a certain way. Ah. Uh, and uh, this basically takes that away because it's magnetic, okay. you can do it either way now. Now, USB-C is fixing that problem, it's supposed to be reversible, mm -hmm. but still, this is really cool. We're, we're going away with the fat iPhone plugins and going to the smaller ones, so yeah. I think that's one of the things that will help out the most for an iPhone. Yeah. Big ones aren't that bad. The 30 pin connector uh, won't rip out as easily, but it will definitely send your phone flying. Yes. The lightning cable won't rip out very easily, but it also won't really send your phone flying very well, so it's kind of in that weird in between. Yeah. I like this magnetic because it keeps the whole plug outside of the phone, so if something happens, it just pops right Ooh. off, no problem. Mm -hmm. I really like it. Yes. I want all the phones to do this. I really hope the magnet is very strong because I don't want it to be like I'm laying there in bed and then turn over. And, I, I um, imagine, have you seen like the MacBooks, how theirs is? I have. It's it's actually I imagine bad. it'll be about that strong. Actually, not, it's not that bad. Because you don't want it too strong because you don't want to mess with the internals of your cell phone, which I mean, there's not too much to mess with since it's a solid state memory, mm. but still. Um, so yeah, it's really cool. I like it. I think it's a good idea. Um, I definitely may keep an eye on them, on the company, mm -hmm. and if I don't back it, I'll definitely probably buy it after production starts. Okay. So, another interesting Kickstarter that we saw, Chris, that had nothing to do with cell phones and everything to do with awesome things that happen. The Smithsonian would like your help in restoring Neil Armstrong's astronaut suit, and more specifically, making a portable, not portable, but a transparent climate controlled box so that they can put it on display. That's right. That's right, because Chris, did you know that the spacesuit that Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin wore to, this, to the moon, while it was made to withstand the forces to take them to the moon and back, they did not have a long-term thought thinking, you know, we should make this to withstand in a museum for years yeah. and years and years. Coming up on 50 years, actually. Yeah. What is it, 69? Yeah. 2019 will be 50 years. Okay. So, the Smithsonian would like your help. They don't get funding for these kind of projects. The funding that they get is more just for like the general run of the museum and stuff. They don't get money to restore a spacesuit mm -hmm. that's already in a climate controlled box. So, it's not like we're losing the spacesuit. It's already in a climate controlled area. It's mm -hmm. just not open to the public because of the way the climate controlled area works. Mm -hmm. So they want your help to not only make this climate control box that they can put on display so everyone can go see the spacesuit, maybe some of those doubters who think we didn't go to the moon will maybe believe, but they also want to make a 3D scan of it so that you can like have a 3D scan of it and like check it out in 3D space and like get up close and personal to it and like a 3D printed version, I guess. I think that'd be pretty cool. You know, the Smithsonian's pretty cool. Um, we'll see what happens. Okay. I don't, I don't think I'm going to back this as much as I love space. Um, I love space. When should we be getting an update, do you think? Um, I think the Kickstarter had like 20 days left. Okay. So we'll know if they met their goal or not. I mean, it looks like they're going to meet their goal. I, I'm pretty sure they'll meet it. So, I, you know, I really like, if it got down to the last day and I like, needed like a dollar left, I'd probably give them a dollar at that point. Would it, uh, let's see, if it would be, if they did this, it would be a long time of prepping, wouldn't it? Oh, yeah. They'd have to get it. They'd have to write things. They first have to go, you know, start building this climate control box. And Re at the same time, they have to, like, get the spacesuit, you know, clean it off without destroying it. 
do all the 3D scanning of it, and then transport it into this climate controlled box and then take that box to the area that's going to be displayed. So it has to be portable enough that they can get it to the climate controlled area, put the space suit in it, close it off, and then transport that whole unit to where it's going to be displayed. Also, and 3D then keep frame. it climate controlled forever. Mm -hmm. Because we don't want to lose that piece of history. So the next thing is going to be National Treasure. They're going to make another National Treasure movie about National it. Treasure 3, Neil Armstrong. Not Lance Armstrong, not Louis Armstrong. Neil. Neil Armstrong. The man. The man. The man. The legend. Okay, he's not a man. He's real. He's real. But he's also cool. Chris, speaking of space. A few weeks ago, SpaceX had an unfortunate accident where one of their rockets exploded. Yes. Luckily, no one was hurt. But uh, a lot of people's wallets are a lot thinner now. Yeah. Um, Elon Musk thinks it's it was some structural error problem, but they really won't know for a long time. Um, but in better space-related news, we launched, well, not we, Russia launched a rocket that contained um, one of their cosmonauts, a NASA astronaut, and the Japanese astron... What do they call their astronaut? Astrophysicist? I don't remember what they call them. I just read the article. But anyway, so the launch was successful. It uh, was about two hours ago from the time we're recording this right now. Okay. Um, it was good. The launch went successful. off without a hitch. The rocket took off, went up into space. Um, about 10 Eastern tonight, they should be docking up with the space station. So it's about a six hour trip. Um, so that's really cool because Elon Musk's um, rocket was going to take like few days, I guess, apparently, because mm -hmm. one of the startups that lost a bunch of their stuff on there was talking about how they have, like, all these little satellites floating around. Anyways. But, yeah, so it's good. You know, the astronauts who are there right now have been there by themselves, just the three of them, for a couple months. Two of them are staying there for a whole year. Mm -hmm. The longest time an astronaut has spent in space. Now, this is very curious, because staying in space for extended periods of time has all sorts of ill effects, such as your bones getting weak, your skin getting thin. Um, it's very hard to stay healthy in space. Mm -hmm. I mean, physically, like your body staying healthy. It's easy to get eat right and all that side of stuff. Science has made that easy. Mm -hmm. The zero gravity on your body, though, is still hard. But uh, so they're going to be there for a year long to see how it goes. Um, so these new three astronauts are going to go join them. I'm not sure when the other astronaut is supposed to return. But uh, yeah, so a successful launch. Go NASA. It's awesome. Well, NASA didn't really do much, but go Russia with your rockets that are cool and still work. Also, have you ever watched a rocket launch other than mine showed you today? Yeah, you showed, you showed me a few. I've shown you a few of the, yeah. the SpaceX ones. Dude, every time a rocket takes off, I'm just like, that's amazing. Mm -hmm. It's just amazing. So, that's cool. Well, Chris... I think that's all we have for today. I think that is. I mean, you got to get going. Sharknado Chris, starts in an hour. Sharknado starts in an hour. Are you going to come watch Sharknado 3? I can't. I can't. I can't. I have prior plans. Well, that's unfortunate because the Sharknado is taking over the White House. It's going to be great, Chris. You're missing out. Are you excited? I am excited. Uh, if anyone else is watching Sharknado 3 tonight, uh, tweet at me, at James Walter, what you think about it. Because I'll be tweeting what I think about it. You should do it. You should do a, uh, a video review on it or something. Yeah, well, I'll, I'll probably tweet about it enough, and maybe I'll blog it at the end of the night or something. Okay. But Chris, is there anything that you would like to plug for our lovely viewers? No. I mean, uh, I can tell you where you can find me. Like, okay. you, like you can do every week. Um, but my Twitter is never lose heart. That's all one word. James is very easy. That's right. You can find me on Twitter at James Walter. You can find him tonight and he'll be tweeting. I'll be tweeting some. I don't know. I don't tweet all that often. Chris will be tweeting some emo lyrics. Exactly. Oh, wait, that was a few years ago. He's that was. Now. I still tweet some music and stuff like that and some funny stuff. And If you're watching on YouTube and you like our brand new lower thirds, let us know. If you think they look terrible, also let us know. Chris, uh, we went ahead and bought the Adobe Creative Suite. Okay. Because it turns out the $50 subscription is $600 a year, which is less than half of what it used to cost okay. just to buy the Creative Suite. So it's a pretty good deal. Okay. Um, so Rachel wants to use Photoshop to with her sticker shop. 
because design stickers the way she was doing it was very difficult. So she's going to use Photoshop now, so that will help her with her four planners now that she's making stickers for. Okay. So if you're into stickers and planners, her Etsy shop is Plan Pizzazz. Um, she's going to use InDesign to help her with some other things she's working on. And I get to use Adobe Premiere Pro. Awesome. So that's awesome. And I made the lower thirds with After Effects. So if you like them, let me know. If you have any tips or tricks, let me know because I really like editing film, but I take too long because I get like funny about it. You know, I'm like, oh, I gotta make it look like amazing. And I was sitting there last night working on After Effects, or not last night, the night before. Um, maybe it was last night. It was either last night or the night before. And I was like, Rachel, does this look good? She's like, yeah, it looks good. I was like, it looks terrible. She's like, no, it looks fun. I'm like, no, it looks bad. And I'm just really hard on myself when I'm designing stuff like that. Wow. So. Let us know what you think about it. I won't be hurt if you think it looks terrible and I'll just start making new ones. But if you notice production stuff changing a lot over the next few weeks on YouTube especially, that's why. Because I'm doing the video editing now with Adobe Premiere and with After Effects. And so it's probably going to take me a while to get something that we really like going. Okay, cool. We need a new design. Um, I might start using um, Adobe Audition, I think is what their audio editor is called for the podcast. I haven't decided yet. Adobe um, Audacity works fine, but Audition is supposed to have a better um, MP3 encoder. Okay. So I might try that out. I might not. I don't know. But that's all I have going on. So I've been messing around with that, and it's a lot of fun. So it's cool. Well, you can also find the Weekly Flare. Go to theweeklyflare.com. You can check out our blog, our podcast. Um, there's a link to our YouTube channel. There's a link to our Patreon channel if you want to donate. Um, of course, if you don't want to donate, but you like reading audio, listening to audiobooks, there's our Audible trial that we talked about earlier, so you can check that out. Uh, or you can just check us out for free, because we're fine with that too, if you really want to. Either way is cool. We're just glad that you're here listening. Um, so thanks for watching, and we'll see you guys again in seven days. Take it easy. Peace.